Welcome to Independent VFX. I'm Scott Newman, and in this tutorial, we'll be creating this nighttime AC130 scene using Adobe After Effects and Element 3D. And you will also need the Jet Strike Pack for Element. And make sure you download this image, which we'll be making available. Um, check out the description underneath this video for the link. Let's get started. So start by importing your image into a project. You're just going to drag this down here and put it into a comp. There it is. Um, so obviously this is a daytime image. We're going to need to turn this into a nighttime looking image. So what we'll do is just quickly and quite gen generally in this scene, we'll do that. And then later on in the project, we'll make refinements to it. Um, so let's start by getting the bottom half of this image uh, a bit darker. You know, right now the sky is quite dark, but the clouds are clearly lit by sun or daylight. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to come up here and grab a rectangular mask, and I'm just going to draw through the bottom half of the image. Come down here to your mask layer. Make sure the mask is selected. Hit the F key to access feather properties. And I'm just going to feather it by about 400 pixels. Then to that adjustment layer, I will apply color correction levels. And what I want to do is grab this bottom most triangle slider and pull it in so that my highlight values or my white values go quite a bit darker. You can see what's happening there if I exaggerate it. So we're going to darken those right down. We're also going to come up here to our gamma and we're going to change the gamma to introduce more contrast into the image. So something like that. Then to the very top of these layers, we're going to apply a new solid. We're going to make a black solid. Say OK and set this top layer to color. What that's going to do is strip out all the color from this image. Um, we're just going to knock that back a little bit. Let's make that layer about 70% opaque. So we keep just a little bit of this sort of nighttime blue in the sky and a very subtle bit of color in the clouds. Um, you know, at night you don't tend to get a lot of color. Color is very muted and monotone. So let's go with that for now as our nighttime background cloud image. I am going to go ahead and make a new composition. And this is going to be our main comp where we're going to do our AC-130 gunship. So let's just call this comp C-130. I'm going to make it five seconds long and I'm going to work at HD. So there we have an empty comp. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Um, and let's go to our project window here and grab our cloud comp that we just did. And we're going to drop it in here. There it is. For now, I'll leave it at those default position and scale values. I'm going to go and add a solid on top of that. And the solid layer will be our element layer. So I'll call this, let's call this element. We will then apply Video Copilot element to this layer. Come up here to the dialog window and hit scene setup. On the right, I'm going to browse to my Jet Strike model pack. And we're going to use the AC-130 that is called Ground Assault. It's this first one here. There it is. Just so we're all on the same page, it's this one. Right, so I'm going to click OK. And there's my C-130 model in the scene. So let's go ahead and add a camera to the scene. So I recommend using a fairly long lens camera, anything from a 150 millimeter up to like a 300 millimeter. I'm going to just go for a 200 because um, we're kind of going to go for that that quite cinematic Michael Bayish kind of look where you orbit around an object and the background uh, moves quite dramatically in the background. So the background in the background, what is that? But um, yeah, so I'm going to go for 200 mils. And you can see nothing happened. Just put the camera in the scene. The camera obviously needs to be a lot closer to our model. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to access position. And you'll see here this Z value. If I start scrubbing it to the right, we slowly move closer to the model. Um, so what I'm going to do to just speed things up, I'm going to put a typed value in there. I'm going to try, say, minus 6,000. Mm, bit closer. Let's try minus, minus 5,000. There we go, that's better. Um, and at this point, let's come and make our background layer a 3D layer. So I'm going to enable 3D for it. And obviously now it's massive, it's close up. So let's push that into the background. I'm going to say, let's put that at, say, 10,000 pixels into the distance. 
That's great for now. And at this point, come and make sure your camera is a two node camera up here. There's an option for one node camera, make sure it's two node camera. Um, what that will allow is if I move my camera left or right, you see we get this kind of orbiting effect happening already because the airplane model is positioned in the center of the comp um, and our sky is obviously way off in the background. Um, so doing this quick orbit test, I can already see I think the sky is maybe a bit too far away. So let's just go and set it to, it was set to 10,000, let's set it to say 7,000. And now if I orbit my camera, I think that's a slightly better motion relative to the aircraft. So I'll reset my camera. And what we want to do next is come to our element layer and right off the bat, let's go to group utilities and create a group null. So what that's going to let you do is it's going to let you access all the position scale and rotation parameters for the aircraft uh, without having to go and dig inside the element interface all the time. So you can just come here now to this null um, I've hit R to open up rotation and you'll see here if I scrub the Y value now we are rotating our aircraft. So I'll reset that and let's rename this null to C130 null and I'm going to go and hide the null because I don't need to see that red box the whole time and I'm just going to put it above my element layer so I always know where it is. Right, so let's use this null now to just position our aircraft roughly. So I'm going to open up R and I'm going to just change the heading on our aircraft to sort of be at a nice three-quarter angle, maybe somewhere there. And I'm also going to rotate the Z axis, which would be the bank or the roll. Something like that. So the idea is this gunship is kind of in a left-hand orbit firing the gun. So it would be tilted or pitched like that. And at this point, I think I might want to put my camera just a little bit higher up to see a bit more of the top of that wing, maybe somewhere there. Um, and I'd like to now go and drop this horizon and probably scale this image back a bit too. So I'm going to just go to my cloud layer in the background, scale it down ever so slightly somewhere there. Hit P for position and I'm going to drop it a bit lower in the Y axis just so my aircraft kind of breaks the horizon. That's pretty cool. And then let's come to our camera and let's just put a little bit of rotation on the z-axis. Cameras are hardly ever level, especially in the air. And I think doing something like this just adds a nice dynamic to the shot too. So let's go ahead and tweak our background image to get it a little bit more nighttime looking. So I'm going to apply effect color correction levels. And again, I'm probably going to bring the highlights down a bit. I'm going to bring my shadows in and just crunch the blacks a bit. That's starting to get more in line with what I want. And I'm going to also just crush the gamma a fraction. Maybe brighten up my highlights again. Something like that will do for now. And let's go ahead and start adding lights. So I'm going to add a layer, new light. Um, I'm going to change this to a point. I'm going to change this to a point light. Now the 3D purists among you are probably saying, hang on, that's not right. Um, I'm going to simulate moonlight with a point light. I know it's not really the done thing, but this is art, not science. So make sure cast shadows is enabled. Um, the intensity at 100, color is white. Say OK. There's your default light position. Doesn't look too great. So let's start by pushing this light into the background so it's behind our model. So I'm going to just push the Z value to the right, which in turn pushes our light deeper into the scene. Probably somewhere there, and I'm going to lift it higher. Just there to the edge of our comp. Maybe a little bit left. There we go, I'm quite liking that position. Maybe a little deeper into the shot. Something like that. And then I'm going to come here to my element layer, and this is a good time to start setting up shadows. So what we're going to do is access over here, render settings, come down to shadows, change it from shadow mapping to ray traced, and then tick enable. And there you can see instantly what happened. So off, on, off, on. There we've got nice shadows being cast by our light. 
Um, now, I want to go and add an ambient light just to put a touch of fill into these pitch black shadows. And this is where things get tricky. You really have to decide how much is enough. Um, before I do that, this first light I made, I'm just going to rename it to key because it's our key light in the scene. And let's come up here now and add a new light. This time we're going to make an ambient. And for color, grab your picker and pick one of these mid blues out of the sky. Something like that. Um, and for now, I'll leave the intensity at 100 just so you can see what it does. So there you can see that ambient light giving us a whole lot of fill on our aircraft. So let's go ahead and rename this light to ambient. And let's drop its opacity way down because obviously it's far too bright. So let's start at say 25%. There you go, immediately much better, but still the side of the aircraft looking a little flat. Um, so I, I tend to like to go really low here, sort of values around 10% or 5%. I'll leave it at 10% for the sake of this tutorial, just so there is some detail in the side of the aircraft. So next, let's go and access the surface parameters on our aircraft, just to start getting a little, a little more interest happening here. So I'm going to open up Element, Scene Setup. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make this aircraft nice and tactical. So let's switch off these lights. So under the Ground Assault model, access the body surface. Um, scroll down in your list here to illumination and set intensity to zero. That should switch our lights off. Then let's go back to the basic surface parameters, basic settings. For now, I'll leave diffuse at one. I want to up that specular amount. Uh, at the moment, it's 1.86. I'm going to make it about three or potentially even higher. That's just going to give us some nice sheen and kick from that moonlight that we've put in there. Specular shininess, um, I'm going to make it a, probably a bit, bit sharper. I'm going to put it up to about 0.4 or 0.5 for now. Um, and we'll leave that sharpness at zero. So let's go ahead and say OK. And there you can already see, just creating a little bit more variation in life across the top of our model. Um, looking at this, I think I'm going to need to tweak the position of our light, of our key light. So I'm going to just play with moving this left and right and up and down. So where it is at the moment, I don't really like how that shadow from the tail cuts the front wing. So let's see if I can eradicate that by putting the light at just a touch higher up. There we go. So I've raised the height of the light. Um, and I'm just shifting it left again now. And now I'm shifting it right. And you can see what that highlight is doing. So let's say for now I was happy with that. So. As you can see, very subtle changes create quite massive effects visually on your model. So something I failed to mention is our background layer, um, the clouds, is actually a 3D layer and is being affected by that light that we've put into the scene. So we need to come down here and fix that. Um, and under material options for the cloud layer where it says accept shadows, I'm going to say off. And accept lights, I'm going to say off just because we don't want lighting and things we're doing in the scene to affect that background layer. We only want it to affect the aircraft model. Right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and put a glow up into the sky for where the moon would be. So I'm gonna start by creating a new solid, or just a white solid for now. There it is. Come up here and grab a circular mask tool. Hold the shift key to constrain it to a perfect circle and just draw a small circle in the middle of your comp like that. Then select your mask, hit the F key for feather, and let's crank the feather right up somewhere there, even there. So what am I sitting at there? 200, maybe even up to 250, 220, somewhere there. You basically want your circle to completely feather out. Make that a 3D layer. Again, access its material options. Say accept shadows off, accept lights off. And let's set this layer to add. And then what we want to go and do is put it right in the background, just above the position of our clouds, which was the Z value was 7,000. So for our moon glow, let's rename this to moon glow. We are going to go and say position, let's say, 
let's just say 6,900. So we know it's in front of the background layer, but it's very close to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it up into the sky, partially out of picture, somewhere like that, maybe to the left a bit and a bit higher. And I'm gonna hit S for scale. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it way up. So we've got a nice big moon glow in the sky happening. Something like that's quite cool, I think. Again, this is personal preference, and I'm gonna lift it just a little higher. Then what I'm gonna do, the moon glow layer, I'm gonna duplicate again. You can see it becomes a whole lot brighter. What I wanna do now is take this top iteration and just scale it way down. So we start getting a little bit of a hot spot there in the middle of our big outer glow. Our hot spot, I might just drop the opacity ever so slightly. So there we have our basic lighting setup for the moon. What I'm gonna do next is add another light into the scene which will serve as the flash or the light that goes off when the big gun gets fired. So let's go ahead and add another light. Again, we're gonna use a point light. We can have shadows enabled. And for the color, we're gonna choose kind of a hot, ready orange, something like that. For intensity, we'll leave it at 100 for now. Let's say OK. And there's the light again in its default position. So what you want to come and do now is we're going to position this light out here somewhere where the big flash would be from the gun. Again, this isn't accurate science we're talking about here, so we are going to probably end up cheating the position of where this light is. So let's have a look at our top view. Right now the light is totally in the wrong position, so let's go and start moving it sort of under the wing out here somewhere. So that's our top view. Let's have a look at our back view. You can see it's way too high. Let's move it down. See, there's the gun there. So let's, let's see what that's giving us from the active camera view. Okay. So you can see it's starting to affect the body of the aircraft. I'll switch it off and on and off and on. Obviously the position totally not right yet. Uh, let's go ahead now and just rename this to gun light. Um, and let's play with the position here a little bit now that we have it roughly in the right place. So I'm going to push it deeper into the shot. Ooh, I like what's happening there on the side of the aircraft. What I don't like is what it's busy doing on the tail. So I'm going to bring it forward again. I'm just playing with the Z value for now. I quite like this position right here actually. Catching a little bit of this pod, whatever that is, bit of that engine. And I like the sheen on the side of the aircraft here. So I'm going to go ahead and parent the gun light to our group null, our C130 null, just so that, you know, wherever I, I'll just do a quick rotation to show you, wherever I rotate the aircraft, that light will rotate with it. So let's just reset that or undo that. What I also want to do now is come and make this light a little bit harsher and stronger and probably a little bit more orange too. So let's start by upping the intensity to say double what it was. There we go, starting to get nice and hot. And the color, let's put a bit more orange into that. Got to be careful not to go too far, otherwise like that looks a bit ridiculous. Maybe a bit more red in there. Yeah, I'm liking that. And let's just back that off a little bit. Uh, I'll say okay. So there we go, that's, that's the light that's gonna flash on and off very briefly when our aircraft fires its gun. So as I've said, it's parented to the gun. So we are now at a place where our scene is lit, uh, everything is set up and parented, uh, and we're in a good place to start animating our camera and our aircraft and doing the flash and the smoke. So that's it for part one of this tutorial. In the next part, we'll be covering all of those other things I just mentioned. In the meantime, stay tuned. Please share our channel with the independent filmmaking and VFX community out there in your circles. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman. Cheers.